This is Guizhou Province in southern China. A fully loaded lorry nearly plunged into a ravine when the bridge beneath it suddenly gave way. What caused the collapse? Torrential rains that triggered a landslide? A natural disaster, yes, but one that's becoming increasingly common and increasingly deadly. China has built some of the most incredible modern infrastructure in the world, from record-breaking bridges to massive highways stretching across remote provinces. But despite these engineering feats, something keeps going wrong. Bridges collapse, lives are lost, public confidence is shaken. So what's really behind these failures? Is it nature, human error, corruption, or something deeper within China's development model? Today, we dive deep into the troubling pattern of why bridges in China collapse so often. First, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Since the late 1990s, China has undergone the largest infrastructure expansion in modern history. The country has added over 5 million kilometers of roads, including over 160,000 kilometers of expressways more than the United States. This infrastructure boom was strategic. The Chinese government used roads and bridges to connect isolated communities, boost trade, and stimulate local economies. Massive funding and incentives poured into provinces, and local officials were under pressure to deliver quickly. But speed came at a price. Projects that would normally take years were completed in months. Environmental reviews were rushed. Engineering plans were copied and pasted. The pressure to build fast and cheap often outweighed the need to build strong and safe. China's landscape adds serious challenges. Provinces like Guizhou, Yunnan, and Sichuan are mountainous, wet, and geologically unstable. In these regions, landslides aren't rare, they're seasonal. In Guizhou, where the recent collapse happened, over 70% of the land is mountainous. Foundations have to be dug deep, and support columns must resist both water and shifting soil. But not all bridges are engineered to that standard. Some bridges are placed directly over erosion-prone zones, Others are built on layers of loose, fine, loose sediment that becomes dangerously unstable when wet. The result? Rainfall that might cause inconvenience elsewhere can be catastrophic here. One landslide or sinkhole can rip out the earth from under a structure in seconds, just like in Guizhou. A less obvious problem lies in how bridges are designed. In many cases, templates are reused even if the terrain, weather, or traffic demands vary. In the rush to meet deadlines, engineers sometimes rely on one-size-fits-all blueprints. While efficient on paper, this approach fails to account for local conditions. A bridge designed for the flat plains of Jiangsu might not survive the mountainous shifts of Guizhou. Add to that cost-saving measures like shallower foundations, fewer support beams, or lower-grade concrete, and you end up with structures that are vulnerable even before they open to the public. Now we get to one of the most controversial issues, corruption and corner cutting. When a bridge collapses, investigators often find that it wasn't just nature, it was negligence. There have been high profile cases where contractors used hollow beams instead of solid ones, or where cement was mixed with substandard fillers to save costs. Sometimes safety checks are faked, inspection officials are bribed, or companies win bids using unqualified subcontractors. In 2007, the Zhujiang Bridge in Guangdong collapsed after being struck by a barge. But the real scandal came later when it was discovered the piers were poorly reinforced and the bridge should have withstood the impact. Transparency is improving in recent years, but these cases highlight a fundamental issue. When profit and political pressure outweigh safety, the public pays the price. Even a well-built bridge can fail if it's misused. Across many parts of China, overloaded trucks are a massive problem. Despite laws limiting truck weights, enforcement is inconsistent. Some truckers overload their vehicles to save money, carrying double or triple the legal limit. This might go unnoticed for a while, but over time, the stress adds up. Bridges develop microscopic cracks. Joints loosen, supports bend, and eventually, under just the wrong load or weather event, it collapses. In one infamous case, a bridge in Fenghuang County collapsed in 2007, just a year after it was completed. Investigators found that not only was it poorly designed, it was also regularly overloaded by sand trucks far above the bridge's weight limit. 
Beyond engineering and enforcement, there's a political layer to this story and it often goes unspoken. In many parts of China, local government officials are under intense pressure to deliver visible progress. New highways, tall buildings, and of course, bridges. Success in politics can hinge on showcasing rapid development. In some regions, completing infrastructure projects ahead of schedule isn't just encouraged, it's expected. But what happens when deadlines matter more than durability? When performance evaluations reward speed rather than safety? Corners get cut, inspections get skipped, and contractors are chosen based on cost and connections, not quality. One provincial audit in 2023 found that over 40% of reviewed bridge projects were awarded without competitive bidding. That's not just inefficient, it's dangerous. In a system where rapid development is tied to political promotion, safety can become a secondary concern. Until that changes, even the best engineering reforms may struggle to take root. It's not all bad news, like in recent years, Chinese authorities have started to crack down on poor construction practices. New regulations have been passed, bridge inspections have increased, and GPS systems now track overloaded trucks. Some provinces have even established independent audit teams separate from local governments to ensure accountability. Technology is helping too. AI-powered sensors now monitor stress and vibration in real time. Drones are used to inspect remote bridge structures without putting workers at risk. These are promising developments. But as the recent collapse shows, the work is far from over. The image of that lorry, its front wheels dangling into a void, reminds us of how fragile even the strongest structures can be, especially when built in haste or neglected over time. China has proven that it can build world-class infrastructure. But when bridges collapse, whether from rain, corruption, or poor oversight, it's not just a structural failure. It's a failure of planning, trust, and accountability. So the next time you drive across a bridge anywhere in the world, remember, it's not just concrete and steel holding you up. It's the invisible web of design, regulation, enforcement, and integrity. And when even one link in that web breaks, the whole system can come crashing down.